Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is Crown Battles by Ant Fun Games. This is a two to eight player game that takes roughly 30 to 60 minutes to play and is for ages 10 and up. And in the game Crown Battles, the King of Akoria is dead. You and other pl players are going to vie now for the throne by attempting to do trick-taking battles, form alliances, and attempt to bid on tricks. The number of bids that you place could be the amount of money that you can win as you go from round to round, increasing your hand size and playing down more and more tricks. At the end of the last round, whoever has the most points is the winner, but don't be fooled, there's quite a bit of uniqueness added to this trick-taking game with not only alliances, different types of strategy as to how you make tricks, extended battles and parallel battles with hidden missions that you're never gonna run out of fun stuff to do. Let's go ahead and show you how to set the game up, how to play, and of course, my review. To begin setup, the first thing you're going to do is decide the number of players playing the game. From there, check the rules to determine what suits and how many of each card for each suit will be placed in this deck here. I currently have a two player setup, so that means I'm gonna have a five through 13 for each of the different card color types, as well as a number of golem, dragon, and peasant cards in this deck. I'll shuffle this deck and place it within reach of all players. Then give each player a number of tokens ranging from zero to 10. This is the number of uh, bets they can do throughout the game. You can mix and match them as long as you have enough that you can utilize for the game. And uh, there's not gonna be enough for an entire set of each, uh, at least in this prototype, but uh, you can basically assign them as you need them. Place the marker here. This is a spinner that will determine the trump suit for each and every round where you're going to be playing tricks. Set aside the die, the crown, as well as the round marker and set that to, to one. That's the number of rounds you're going to be playing and what number of round you are currently on. As well as take the extra cards. You're going to have extra cards in this game. They're going to be round types that you can utilize in the advanced game mode. In fact, this is the way to play. Shuffle these up and place them next to all players uh, and set aside the extra cards. These are special cards. If you want, you can take the peasants out of the deck and add these to the deck instead. They still function as far as strength goes as peasants, which means they're the weakest card, but now they give you a special ability when you play them. Take the mission cards as well as anything else and set those aside. You may be utilizing those from round to round and any of the tokens that you're not currently utilizing other than these ones here at the markers of 0 through 10. These are all tokens and markers that will come up as the different rounds progress throughout the game. There you go, that's all you need to do. Begin the round by giving each player a number of cards, and in this case, it will be two for each player. And then, it's time to do some trick taking. Okay, so how to play the game Crown Battles? Well, first, I'm playing a two player game, in which case, in a two player game, you're gonna be playing a number of rounds, and that's going to be 10. And you're going to start with two cards, and you're gonna go up two cards for every round. So 10 rounds, which means the first round will be two cards, the second will be four, and then six, and then eight, and so on and so forth. Once you've gathered the cards in your hand from the deck, you are then going to have the first player go ahead and spin this little spinner here, in which case it will land on a color. That color is the trump suit. The trump suit is the suit that beats any other suit for this specific trick. Um, additionally, there are two other areas on the spinner. One is this X marker, which means there is no trump, and the other one is a wild, which means the player who first plays the card out will determine the trump suit. Okay, so now that we have that settled, we're going to go into bidding. Each player has a number of tokens here, and they can choose to bid or double down on their bid, but basically the idea is they're going to bid on how many tricks they think they can win. I will bid Two, two tricks this round, two cards in hand. I think I can win one, so I'll place one out. Then in clockwise order, um, each player is going to be bidding on how many they think they can win. The only rule is that the last player can't even out the bids. After each player has selected a number of tricks they think they're going to win, then you're going to move on to playing cards. The player to the dealer's left, which is the, the player to the left of the guy who has the spinner and or drew one of these um, round cards, is going to start. So they'll take a card from their hand and they will play a card. This is the uh, starting color of the a game. Uh, if you have that color, you must play that color. If you don't, you can play any other color. But the only way to win is if you beat the color that has been placed by having a higher number in the same color, or if you play the trump. And in this case, the trump is blue. So I'll check my hand. Do I have a red card? I don't. Do I have a blue card? 
I don't, which means I have to place something else so I can place out a yellow instead. Now, because red was the card that was played first, that is the forward card, in which case nothing is gonna beat that red card except for a higher red card or a blue card and or the highest blue card. So my yellow is basically a zero. It doesn't win. And the player who played the red card is the winner of this trick. Then we'll move on to the next trick. And the player who won the trick is the player who's going to start. They'll place out their card. Ah, a blue eight. Not only is it their forward card, but it's also the trump card. I've got a green 11. I'll place this card down. Sadly, the eight is stronger than my 11 because it is the trump suit and it was the forward suit. So basically they're going to score another trick here. That ends the round. There's no more tricks to be played. And so we're gonna tally up the number of tricks that were played and who won them. Well, Callie may have won by having more tricks than me, but Callie bid zero, which means Callie's actually going to lose points. Whereas I bid one, and I actually did not hit my marker either. You want to hit ex exactly or only one off. If you're exact, you're gonna score uh, points for being exact plus one for every trick that you won. Uh, if you are off by one, you'll score no points. And if you're off by more than one, you'll start incurring negative penalties of like 20 and 40 and 60 negative points for each of the tricks that you lose in addition to how many you thought you would get. And so you'll tally up these points here. And after you've done so, that is going to end the round and you'll move on to the next round. Thusly, instead of two cards, now it's going to be four cards for each player. And then you're going to start once again. The dealer is going to obviously pass to the next player. They're going to spin the marker and determine what the new trump suit is. And the person to the dealer's left is going to begin by playing a card. Play a card, pass, everybody will play a card and check to see who wins the trick. Score that trick, so on and so forth. And always make sure that you bid at the beginning of each round uh, after you've been dealt the number of cards in your hand. This game's objective is to score as many points as possible by the end of the last round based on the number of players. And in this case, it's whoever has the most points by the 10th round. There are some additional things to keep track of. A, you can use this little marker here to keep track of the rounds going from one to 10. Additionally, if you want, you can add these cards here. These are peasant cards, but they have special abilities. Inside the deck here, like I said before for setup, there's three unique cards in the game. You are going to have dragon cards, peasant cards, and you're going to have golem cards in this deck here. A peasant card is basically worth nothing. It's a zero, it basically has the silver color, it's not useful in any way. You're going to lose with this card. The only way you win with peasants is if you're the first person who plays a peasant and everybody else plays a peasant. So that's, that's the only way. Golem is the, the, the strongest of pretty much every card except for the dragon. The dragon is the card that beats everything. You can house rule these cards though in the rules that explains at the very back of the FAQ as well as additional variants that maybe a 13 of each color beats it. But in this case, dragon beats everything, golem beats everything but dragons, and peasants are completely useless. And of course, like I said, if you wanted to during setup, you can change the peasants to actually have bonus actions. Like all players swap a card, choose left or right. And that's when you play these cards here. Draw an extra card from the deck, look through the deck, and you can only take a minute. Some of these cards will have ex like, like lightning bolt symbols, in which case you'll take the action as soon as you play it, whereas others will actually happen at the end of the round, like being able to change the trump suit, or being able to swap your hand with the opponent, um, or make two of your opponents swap their own hands. There's also the advanced mode of the, of the game, or in my opinion, that, that this is the meat and potatoes of the game, and that is these round types. Basically, in this mode of the game, at uh, the beginning of, uh, um, of playing, you're going to have the dealer flip over one of these cards, and then you are going to do what it says. It changes the game and the round completely, and every single round you'll draw one of these and do what it says. If it's a standard battle, it's explained exactly as I explained it to you, playing the trick as normally. However, there are other unique special cards that will change how the game is played. One of them might actually have you play the round secretly, meaning that the player who starts to the left of the dealer flips their card face up, and that's the forward card, and everybody else has to play their cards face down, and then at the end of the trick you reveal and see who won. Another one could be a parallel battle where the, the player to the dealer's left will play out one card on, their, on one of the areas, and then the next player can choose to either combat that area or play out a new trick. And so you have two tricks going on at once, 
up until each of the tricks is equal to the number of players. So you can only play one card in each trick, but now you have two tricks to, to deal with. And that can cause additional bidding. Some of them will also have the do different types of styles of bidding, whether it be playing your bid face down in secret, uh, doubling up on your bids, being able to bid not only for how many tricks you think you're going to win, but money in addition to that, if you can actually see, so you can kind of extend your bet. There is a wide variety of mini games in here. Uh, like I said, there's a split and wagering dual battles where I can choose one player to duel against as the dealer, and then I have other players duel each other. So that it becomes kind of a one-on-one -on -one or a two-player game, even though there's eight players playing the game. Now we have a little bit of a dual battle going on with the tricks. There's alliances in the game as well. Alliances are where you're going to be able to choose players to work together. And in an odd number of players, uh, one player might have to sit out. Uh, but what happens is each of those players is going to get a marker, one of these envelope markers, and they'll be able to flip those over and reveal a card from their hand to their alliance member, but they can't say anything. And when they bet for how many tricks they think they're going to win, they have to wager together. So if I pick one and you pick one, then the total number of tricks we need to win together is two. We don't want to win any more or any less. And there are a wide variety of different mini games. You're also going to have mini games that will involve this big uh, deck of cards here. These are mission cards and how they work, whether it be a secret mission or an open mission, is you're gonna be drawing five of these guys, picking one of them and either placing it face down or face up, or it's gonna be an alliance mission, uh, mission where you're playing with another player trying to accomplish a mission. And they'll have you trying to do certain things like earn 10 points for each opponent who fails their mission. Or uh, you'll be able to, let's see, I'll find another one. Oh, these ones here. These ones have little grids that explain not only how many players and in what round it is and how many points you get, but what you need to do. If you can win two tricks in a row and you're playing two players and you had eight cards and you had to start the trick off, you'll score 20 points if you do win two tricks in a row at the end of the trick or at the end of the round. Um, at the end of the trick, I should say, yes, the trick round. Uh, win at least one trick, win at least two tricks, at least three, win at most two and no more than two, win at most four, win between four to six tricks, and so on and so forth. And each of these will give you an idea of how many points you score. More points will accrue, accrue, accrue later on. Basically, you get more as the game progresses. So if you're farther in, you'll score more points. And if you're closer with only a few cards in hand, you'll score less. And all these markers here are going to be utilizing uh, specifically for these, these specific round cards here. Uh, sometimes you might actually get a marker uh, for each of the different suits, and you'll be able to bid on how many of each of the colors you think you're going to win to score additional points as well. Or you might have to reveal one of the cards from your hand to all of your opponents. And if you reveal a blue, you have to reveal all your blue cards, a green, you have to reveal your green, and so on and so forth. So each round in this game changes it up a bit. Just keep track of the number of rounds you're playing and the number of cards required in the deck. And you also have a ton of wiggle room when it comes to organizing and creating your deck. But that's the basic idea of the game. You're, it's a trick-taking game with additional manipulation from round to round, changing the game up, utilizing missions, alliances, and backstabbing, different ways of bidding, secret battles, face-up battles with secret missions, and so on and so forth. And whoever has the most points at the last round and the conclusion of the game is the winner of Crown Battles. Okay, what do I think about it? So Crown Battles is kind of the end-all be-all of a standard trick-taking game. And what I mean by that is, if you like trick-taking games like Hearts, this is that game, and then they add a ton of additional content. You're not going to run out of content with this game because each round kind of feels like its own game, even though it's being played as a trick-taking game. Now, it's not like The Crew, which is, that one's kind of a cooperative trick-taking game. There's no cooperativeness about this game here, but it feels like one round is like The Crew, whereas another round is like The Mind. So each kind of round you're playing in this game has a different idea. At one point, you and Bill might be mortal enemies, and then the next round, you're forced to work together on a secret mission. And so it kind of changes the dynamics going from round to round and how you want to score points and how you want to choose to bid. The bidding in this game can go crazy. At one point, you can lose a ton, and then you can gain a boatload. And there is a bit of sway, and you have to kind of base 
what you not what you, you know, it doesn't matter of just winning the trick. Winning the tricks are pointless. The game is all about bidding on how many you think you're gonna win, which is great because that takes a lot of the luck out of here. It only comes down to what your opponents have and how well they bluff and what you have and how well you think you're going to do. And if you can bet well based on the knowledge that you have and what card you possess, then you can win this game. I love the idea of games that feel like it's my fault when I lose. And with crown battles, that's how this game works. Every time I bid and I fail on my bid, I realize I shouldn't have bid that. It happens every round. And every time I successfully bid the correct amount, I go, yeah, that's probably right. I felt like I was gonna score that way. And it feels good to be accurate and to know I was accurate throughout the game. Uh, this game has the added benefits of mini games, and while all of them are a little different, they all feel very similar. Uh, they all add kind of a unique twist, but it's nothing overly complex. Drawing a new one, you're not likely to forget. After playing this game only about, I'd say once, maybe once and a half, I was instantly able to remember pretty much all of these missions, and there's quite a few of them in here. And flipping them over, changing the dynamic of the game each round is a lot of fun. And then, with the missions themselves, even though there's only a couple mission, you know, mission cards from those round cards here, these guys are unique as well in the game, and that feels great when I pull one of these out and I get to choose them and how I want to kind of situate myself for each trick. I love the alliances factor as well. It's also cool that this game not only adds additional cards for additional players, which is what you need in an eight-player game, but allows you to swap the deck around. You have additional dragons and golems and peasants that you can move around. You can remove cards and house rule this game, and it encourages you to do so in the rule book. You can kind of make up your own rules as to how you want to set your forward cards and your trump cards and how you want to base those guys around your unique cards, the peasants, golems, and dragons. And being able to play these kind of unique peasants as opposed to just the generic ones. It's kind of like playing the game Werewolf and you're a basic butt villager and you can swap those guys out for somebody cooler like the Seer or the Witch and now you feel like you're kind of a part of the game. So where you have a card that's not going to win you the trick, it might give you the benefit of winning a later trick. And so I always strongly suggest you use these guys, the Smuggler and Merchant and Magician and Spy as opposed to just the Peasant. Everything you need to play the basic idea of a trick-taking game is here, and it's got this format in which you can start off simple. If you've never played a trick-taking game, you play the basic mode of this game, you understand the basic concepts of a trick-taking game. Like, without all the additional components, this would be kind of a generic trick-taking game. I wouldn't be as interested. It would be fine, because, you know, if you like hearts, you like hearts, and that would be what I would tell you, right? But this is, here is how you play, and now let's add the additional fun factor, the unique elements to the game. I mean, they're throwing in the whole kit and caboodle here. The artwork. The artwork for this game is phenomenal. All of the pieces are wonderful. I am enamored by this art. This is a, from in my opinion, for the style of game this is and what they're looking to do with it, it's a 10 out of 10 artwork. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. I want to know who the artist is. Um, maybe I can steal it. I don't, know if, I, don't know, I don't know if this is the artist or not, but I would like to steal their artist for a game of mine in the future because, damn, it's, it's good. This feels like the theme of the game. Um, I also love the quality of components. Now, as you can see on my right-hand side over here, and how you're looking, I believe it's on your left, all the tokens and bits here, while nice, I believe it's prototypey. I think they're actually showing me these additional pieces. That this, that's what's going to be in the game later. And etched, beautiful, painted wood. These are wonderful. I really, really like them. If it, I don't know if this is the base and the deluxe, because I would not be surprised if this is what you would normally get, because this is actually quite nice double thick chits, but these are even nicer. These are really nice, really thick. I love the round marker. There is additional content in the game that I didn't even know. I, I, I don't know if there is some secret stuff that is in the Kickstarter or if they played around with stuff just to add more complexity, but they have like additional components and additional cards that can be added. And of course, like I said, there's additional cards you can add to the deck. I took out the one through fours for each of the deck sets, as well as additional dragons and peasants and golems. But there is a wonderful quality to this game. The style, everything is very blatant and displayed out for you so you understand it. And most of the stuff you don't even need. You would just set aside. This, all this is just extra stuff that you don't need in the game. All the extra bidding stuff and all these extra markers, you don't need them. You're just playing with your cards as a trick-taking game. And then when you flip, flip over the round, that's when you add the content. It's well done. I love trick-taking games. So in general, I've always, I've never found a trick-taking game I was just like completely not for. But this one, I'm above and beyond most trick-taking games. This one is kind of in on the same lines as the Camelot game that I really enjoyed. Um, 
this is like right up there with that one. I'll show a picture just because I can't remember. I, my wife just had a baby and here I am my first video back as of like yesterday. Anyway, if you're looking for crown battles, you want to take a look. There's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick this up and back this game. Overall, it's a high quality, solid trick-taking game with uniqueness. But if you've played games like this before, it won't feel, feel too far off and you'll probably get a feel and have played something similar for each of these with its own unique twist every single round. Yes, I recommend this game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Crown Battles by Ant Fun Games. If you're interested in picking this title up, there is a link down below in the description, like I said previously. You can also check out our live streams every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, where we play games literally just like this one here. Watch us play games and decide for yourself, not only just hearing what I have in my thoughts and how to play the game, but having people uh, play the game and being able to see the interactions is, is a great way of not just hearing somebody like I can tell you a game is as good as I want until I'm blue in the face, but being able to see it and then of course play it for yourself, that's the only way you're gonna know. So I suggest you do at least watch any live streams of games that you are interested in purchasing. All right guys, hit that subscribe button if you think you've seen some content before from us and you appreciated that content. If you like what we do here and you wanna to continue to support the channel, that's all I ever ask people to do is subscribe and hit the bell notification if you want to see more videos when we upload them. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to battling for the crown against you next time.